a lattice is a linear code defined over the real numbers. This is different from a finite field code, like LDPC codes or BCH codes, which are defined on finite fields. So our motivations for studying lattices, probably the main motivation is wireless communications. Because wireless communications has power constraints and multiple, possibly multiple users, and it will turn out that lattices are very useful in this setting. And also, it's fun and interesting. So with finite field codes, you can't really draw such neat pictures. But um, with the lattices, we can actually draw two-dimensional pictures, which tell us something meaningful about what's happening. This is more motivation. So lattices are codes over real numbers. And many communication signals exist in the real world as real signals. Electromagnetic signals are and if you add two signals together, they have linear superposition. And so it seems very suitable to use codes over the real numbers for phenomenon coding in the real world. Lattices also have a group structure that we're going to talk about, which makes them highly suitable for physical layer network coding. So this is an outline, the current plan of the lattice coding theory in eight lectures. Today is lecture one, and that's introduction to lattices. In the next lecture, I'm going to talk about well-known lattices and connections between coding theory. There is a lattice called the E8 lattice, which is strongly connected to the extended Hamming code, and their application to the unconstrained power channel. Lecture three is we introduce the constrained power and the coset lattice codes, which are necessary for the group structure. Lecture four, I'll talk about lattice decoding and some connections with MIMO. Lecture five, move to the capacity of AWGN channels and how nested lattice codes can achieve that capacity. Lecture six and lecture seven are about two specific high coding gain lattices that RP, uh, look very um, approach the capacity of the um, unconstrained power channel. And then lecture eight, talk about uh, cooperative communications, applying lattices to the bidirectional relay channel and compute and forward models. What is this course not about? There's no coded modulation. So we're not going to mention QAM or you know, QPSK. We won't mention bit interleaved coded modulation, multi-level schemes, etc. We're not going to talk very much about the elegant and algebraic structure of lattices. There's a lot of really nice things you can do with lattices. And it's covered quite nicely in this book. So the standard reference for lattice theory is Conway and Sloan, sphere packing, lattices, and groups. And in fact, a lot of this course comes from this book. Two-dimensional lattices exist. We can draw two-dimensional pictures on the slide. And I'm going to use these as much as possible. But we don't stop at two dimensions. We can consider lattices in very high dimensions. Just we can't draw the picture. As much as possible, I'm going to make connections with finite field codes, with Hamming codes, with LDPC codes minimum distance from. We're going to have these lecture quizzes. You know, suppose you had, you know, a large number of spheres, all of equal size, for example, pool balls, and you wanted to put them into a large box or even a huge warehouse. What is the best way to do that? So this is the question they call sphere packing. So in two dimensions, for example, you could easily imagine arranging the spheres or the pool balls on the surface of the table to try to put as many in as possible. So there clearly there would be efficient and inefficient ways to do this. So on the left hand side is a two dimensional arrangement of spheres, which is rectangular. So we put the spheres onto a grid. But instead, on the right side, 
if you use a hexagonal, if you use a hexagonal arrangement, the packing is much more efficient. And you can see this just by looking at the space in between the spheres. So there's a lot of space in between the spheres here, but much less there. Of course, you can go to three dimensions. Here's a collection of oranges, which represent the spheres. And you might ask the question, how do you put the oranges into the box as efficiently as possible? But the question doesn't stop in three dimensions. You could ask the question in four dimensions. You can't draw a picture, but mathematically it's a valid question.